I've seen The Hangover. Jazz is gonna end up on the roof. That's the twist ending. <sighs> Sarah, this is for Iris. <laughs> Can I chug a beer instead of doing another shot? Yeah. I'm gonna attempt to chug a Noble Prize from Boulevard. No, I don't chug beers very often anymore. 7.5% alcohol. <laughs> It's so cold. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> These are frequent flyer from Boulevard, and they have penguins on them. And the penguins are about to win their fifth Stanley Cup. <laughs> and the penguins end up losing, and it's just a document of avarice. <laughs> just, just me being like, five cups! But like, oh no, 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 no. Um, wow. for what? <laughs> I must be drunk. That wasn't as bad as the first one. Go ahead, clap. Okay. I don't understand what just happened. <laughs> Hi. I'm. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hang on. I can do this. Hey, the internet. <laughs> This hey, isn't a podcast. Hang on. Hi. I'm Ben Went. And this is the history of the greatest story ever told. Sorry, the Bible. <laughs> Hold on. I think I can do it again. Hold on. Hi. I'm Ben Went. And this is the greatest story ever told. Sorry, the Bible. I'm talking about Sinjamin. What's Sinjamin? Sinjamin is a port, port, portmanteau. Sinjamin is a portman, a port. Sinjamin is a portmanteau of Benjamin, which is my name, and Sin, Sinjamin. No, and Sarah, which is my wife's name. The day that changed everything was the day. The Cree called. So Cree, Cree was this lady who called in. And she called in to the phones. Was wanting to buy tickets for some Broadway show. And then Sarah tried to connect her to me. And I don't really know exactly what they talked about. So they... It, they talked on the phone and then they got disconnected. So I get this phone call and it's suddenly it's just like, Ben, Ben, oh my, I was talking to Sarah. I think she got lost in the void. And I was like, what? And she's like, I, got, I was trying to talk to Sarah and she got lost in the void. And I was like, Cree, calm down. And she was like, how did you know my name was Cree? And I was like, I didn't, but in the future I'm drunk. And she was like, is Tom a flat circle? And I was like, maybe. And then she was like, that didn't happen in the conversation. And I was like, I, I know. So then she was like, I'm looking for these glasses. And I was talking to Sarah. And I'm afraid she's lost in the void. And I'm like, what's the void? And she was like, I think the void is lost and found. And I was like, oh, so you think maybe that Sarah was talking to her and Sarah was like, Oh, let's try to find these glasses that you lost because you were looking for glasses. And then Creed, Cree, Creed's a bad band. Cree's a great lady. And Cree was like, yeah, this is Cree and I'm looking for sunglasses. And can I talk to Sarah? And Sarah was like, this is Sarah. It's time of flat circle. And I didn't know that was gonna be a motif tonight. And Maybe, yeah, I'll find you some glasses. And then she went to the void. And then that's when I probably ended up talking to Cree, come to think of it. And then 
Kree and I were like, well, well, Sarah's fine. And then, like, it was such a funny conversation. Cree, I believe in another language that Cree is an anagram for Cupid. Because this lady is the reason why I know my daughter Iris, who's my favorite human who's ever lived. This lady Cree lost her glasses and calls in and is like a total goofball. And that's the reason I know Iris. So I was just saying that Sarah was like, that Cree chick was nuts. And I was like, I know. And she was like, oh my gosh, she's crazy. And I was like, yeah. And then Sarah was like, she was super crazy. And I was like, yeah, she's like crazy, like crazy good as Harry Potter. She's like, I love Harry Potter. And I'm like, I love Harry Potter. And then she's like, me too. And I was like, what house are you? And she's like, I don't know. And I was like, dude, I'm a total Hufflepuff. And she was like, I don't know. I think I'm a Ravenclaw. And it was like, Sarah, you're a GD Hufflepuff. You badger. And it was like, what? And, and I was like, I seriously, I was like, what? You are a Hufflepuff. And then all of a sudden she's like, I have never taken the test. And I mean, like, that's like, you haven't taken the test? And she's like, I haven't taken the test. And I'm not talking about like the STD test. I'm just saying like, you gotta know what house you is. If you're a Potterhead, like how are you gonna be smoking some Potter and be like, I don't know what house I am. So she takes the test. Let me tell you. She's a Hufflepuff, but that's none of my business. Sarah and I are talking to Mixie all day or a day. Like Kid Cudi was like all night and we were like all day. And like, we are talking about everything. If you were stuck on a desert island, what bands are you listening to? If you're stuck on a desert island, what music are you listening to? If you're stuck on a desert island, what movies are you watching? If you are stuck on a desert island and a crocodile and a space ghost are fighting with a shark, who wins? And like, that is it. That is it. It's just like, I love this woman. I'll get to our first date. So, we are going to this Hufflepuff party. Hufflepuff Harry Potter party. And here's the thing that's important to know is that Sarah makes the best mashed potatoes the world has ever known. And I'm like a quarter Irish. And I don't mean to be racist. We like our potatoes. So like everybody's at this party and we go to see Harry Potter part seven. And it's great and it's so fun. And it's one of the first pictures we've ever taken together. And I learned later that right before the party started, Elizabeth is like, so who's coming to the party? And Sarah's like, well, you know, a bunch of my friends, Pat and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and doobie doobie and robot robot. And then Elizabeth's like, Oh, anybody else? And Sarah's like, well, Ben, that guy who has a girlfriend, he might be coming. And then Elizabeth's like, oh my gosh, you have to let him go. And then Elizabeth later texted Sarah and was like, I love him. You have to keep him around. And it was like, well, yeah. And then after that, Callie and I broke up. Callie's a wonderful human, but like we weren't meant to be together. Sarah and I were meant to be together. So Sarah, AKA the vulture, swoops in ASAP. 
and is like, Ben, I'm so sorry that you and Callie just broke up. We should go out for fish tacos. And I'm like, yeah, you think we should? And she's like, yeah, I think we should. So then we like go and get fish tacos and margaritas. And it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm so glad I'm single. And she's like, I bet you are. You can do whatever you want. And then like we go and we watch one of my favorite movies ever and my favorite breakup movie ever, 500 Days of Summer. And Sarah had never seen it before. But what's really funny about 500 Days of Summer is that at the end of 500 Days of Summer, spoiler alert, is that like Joseph Gordon-Levitt, AKA hashtag JGL, was there a lot of hashtags in this? Or what? Who is counting? What? Has, hold on. Has anybody counted the hashtags? Let's go, pens. Let's go, pens. What was I saying? Um, 500 is the summer. 500 is the summer. 525,600 minutes. That's the second rent reference so far. And Sarah watches it. And the thing that's funny about 500 is the summer is that at the end, hashtag DGL realizes that, you know what? It's not about the 500 Days of Summer, it's about the Autumn. Because he moves on to Autumn, who's gonna be his one. And guess who's my the one? Sarah, we were tight. Like, like a Chinese finger trap. You know, like, you push it together, you pull your fingers out. You pull it apart, your fingers are like, oh, we're in this. And like, we went to parties and it was close and it was like, this feels right. But then like, I was kind of being like coy cause I was like, we just, I just got out of this relationship. I'm like, this is, you know, I don't want to rush into this. And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But like, I think low key, she was like, I think kind of like I'm into this. I told my family like, guys, I love Sarah. And they were like, yeah, oh yeah. And then I was like, guys, like I love her. I'm gonna ask her to marry me. They were all like, yeah, that's a good idea. And then I was like, great. I'm so fucking gonna do that. I'm sorry I said fuck. Is that inappropriate? <laughs> that's funny. I don't care who you are. I don't care what language. Oops, shlooshy. I come up with this dumb plan. I'm like, you know what would be a good idea? I'm gonna propose to Sarah in North Carolina on the beach. And that's the beach that I went to when I was a little kid. And that's a good idea. And like in the abstract, maybe that's a good idea. But here's the thing. That's in North Carolina. I don't know if you're good at geography. That's not close to Kansas City. So you have to get on an airplane. So Sarah took an airplane to North Kansas City. And it was like, but it didn't crash. It just landed. And that would have sucked. And then I was like, I'm going to take an airplane. But we had different work schedules that week. So I was like, different airplane. And then I died. <laughs> we both got out of planes to North California. No, hold on. Carolina. Sorry. I'm starting to get tired. We went to Raleigh, North Carolina, and they were like, hey, you guys are in North Carolina. And I was like, what's up? And then on a different flight, Sarah was probably like, hey, y'all. Because she's from Oklahoma. We got a car for rent. We're not gonna pay. We're not gonna pay third reference to rent. 
What? I was not banking on that for this to be Frank Furter, which is the hot dog. We rented a car. I believe it was an Enterprise. Hashtag shameless plug. And we went across the state to the outer banks. And that's where we went. And on the way there, I was like, I had this dumb idea. I was like, hey, you should like totally listen to this new band. They're called Gogo Bordello. All this time, I've got a ring in my pocket. And she's like, yeah, cool. And I'm like, Sarah, this band rules. They're like a gypsy punk band. She's like, that sounds amazing. We play them. And they're like, start wearing purple, wearing purple. La -da 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 -da. Start wearing purple for me now. And she's like, this is terrible. Do you sound like Borat? And they sound terrible. And I'm like, cool. And she's like, yeah, they're terrible. It's awful. And I can't believe you thought I'd like this. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. And then we just like rode in silence for like 30 minutes. Cause I was like so nervous. Cause I'm like, I'm about to be like, hey, we marry me. And she's like, yeah, this punk band, they're terrible. So then we get North Kansas and North Kansas City. Wait, what? No, North Kansas City's where I work. That's not North Kansas City, that's far away. We went to North Kansas City. No, that's where I work. We went to North Carolina, and when we were there, what? What am I talking about? Oh, we went, so like, then we go to the beach. This is the first beach I ever walked on. We even like deliberately stayed in the exact same housing edition of the exact same beach I ever walked on. And so we go and we walk out and my brother Nate ran ahead and he hid the ring in a seashell. And he and my mom went ahead and they were pretending like they were looking for seashells. My brother Ethan and my dad, they were pretending like they were filming all this. Well, they were. And then my brother and my mom are like, we found this great seashell. And I'm like, Sarah, you should go pick it up. The seashell should be the first seashell you ever pick up on a beach. And she's like, yeah, that sounds like great. And she runs ahead and she picks up the seashell and she picks it up and she flips it around and there's a jewelry box. And she's like, wait, a what? And I'm like, yeah, it might be a ring, maybe. And she's like, is it? And I'm like, I don't know. Open it, I can't remember. I'm too drunk. Wait, no, that's me now. But so like, I was like, open it. And she's like, I'm gonna open it. And I'm like, stop whispering. We're on the beach. And she's like, oh my G, that's a ring. And that's not a bad ring to be frank. Cause Ben went, you're not super stingy and you bought me a pretty good ring. And I was like, look, I'm not trying to brag. It's a pretty good ring, all things considered. And she was like, what are you asking? And I'm like, will you marry me? And she was like, yeah, I'll marry you. And then we made out on the beach. And then we got married and it was awesome. And that was on June 8th of 2013. And every year after we celebrate the anniversary and I love it. There have been all sorts of good things that have happened to our family since then. You know, we, before that even happened, we met our very good friend, Pertrude Stein. She's a cat. And we had our son Ezra who is an amazing, amazing human being who didn't live long, but it was great. And then we met our friend Edgar Allan Paw, who was a really integral part of our family for a long time. And then we met Iris Mary, who's just an absolute all-star. 
she crushes it on a daily basis. She's funny. Way funnier than I could ever be. And she's pretty and smart and sweet. And she has all of Sarah's best traits. Sarah, you crushing it, girl. So that's the whole point. And happy anniversary. I love you. I love you because you're smart and you're funny and you challenge me and you put up with my crazy artist brain and I truly believe you love me for who I am and I know I'm a flawed man and I believe in my heart that you love me for all those flaws and somehow in this weird speckled way you think those flaws make me more attractive, and that's crazy. You might have a very specific type of mental illness, but I like that mental illness. Happy Drunk History Day.